In the original Trails of Cold Steel, the game abruptly cuts to where everything that could potentially go wrong, well, went wrong. Trails of Cold Steel 2 is a direct continuation of the original game as it picks up right where the first game left off. It is absolutely imperative that you play through the original game before you start playing this game. The game gives players a pretty competent backstory that the player can view at any time, but it still will be beneficial to the player to play the first game. If you played the Trails in the Sky games as well as the unlocalized Trails to Zero and Trails to Azure, you might notice a callback here and there as well. In Trails of Cold Steel 2, you once again play as Reen Schwarzer, a student of Sora's Academy as well as the leader of Class 7. Only now, Reen is alone. He was separated from his friends the moment the Civil War and the Erbonian Empire started. It's been a month since then, and Reen has gained some good news and some bad news. The good news is that his friends are okay, and he gained the general information on their location. The bad news is that the princess, as well as his sister, a, a close friend of hers, has also been captured. Reen must now move forward with three objectives in mind. Find his friends, rescue his sister and the princess, and help end the war in any way he can. On a fundamental level, everything is more or less the same from the overall world to the battle system. There are a few instances that make the game just ever so slightly better from the previous one. For example, in the battle system, there is the overdrive system. When two characters are linked and the overdrive gauge is full, the two will be in overdrive. When in overdrive, not only are HP recovered and CP gained, all status elements are gone. You gain three turns to attack or use the opportunity to heal up. If you choose to attack, any attack will unbalance the enemy. It is truly a game changer in the highest regard. The only drawbacks are that it takes a while for the overdrive gauge to fill up, and that not everyone can perform overdrive with one another. Moving along, there's also the fact that all over the world map, there's a new type of chest. Outside of the typical money-filled chest, chests filled with items and quartz, and some filled with enemies, the new chest is meant specifically for two characters to gain the overdrive ability. These chests are special in that the game asks for two characters specifically, and will have them fight a horde of tough enemies. Once the battle is won, these two can use the overdrive together. Outside of additions to the battle system, there is a completely separate type of battle as well. These battles take place inside of mechs, and honestly, are just one giant game of rock, paper, scissors. Of course, some require some sort of strategy, but as long as you figure out and hit their weak spots, you should be just fine. The biggest change of all, though, is how equipping quartz is handled. In previous games, all you had to do was open up a slot and you'd be good to go. But now, all your slots are open only for them to have levels, up to three, attached to each slot. The higher the level, the rarer the quartz you can equip to said slot. Of course, while many things change, other things stay the same as well. Just because there isn't a schoolhouse to explore doesn't mean there isn't a dungeon of some sort. Granted, it isn't a central dungeon, but throughout your travels you'll see optional shrines that more or less serve the same function. There's also your notebook. That's right, it's time to fill up your recipe book, fishing book, and find books all over again. But, just like the schoolhouse, just because it's not there doesn't mean you can't do it. In this case, just because you're not at SOARS doesn't mean there aren't any students to talk to either. Due to the current situation, you'll see some students from time to time, so it's best to check up on them as well, to complete your character profiles. Naturally, being a Trails game, it's best to check up on everyone, as after every main quest, every NPC will have a new line of dialogue. Not to mention, there may be a hidden quest every now and again as well. Don't worry, you can still bond with Class 7 too. When it's time to take a break, you're given bonding points to hang out with them which then increases bond levels, which helps down the line when they link up in battle. Also like before, there is AP to gain, with a fair amount being hidden behind quests and getting the secret objectives in boss battles. If there's anything to not like about Cold Steel 2, it's the frame rate. The game taxes the Vita much more in this game than the last. Granted, it isn't during battles or anything, but during some cutscenes and some sections on the map, the game just chugs along much worse. Overall, Trails of Cold Steel 2 is much, much better than the first game in just about every regard. But sadly, the frame rate problem on Vita still exists, and in some cases are harsher than the previous game. The new mechanics are a welcomed addition as well to the game, as they add additional strategy into the mix. For fans of the first game and the franchise, it's time to pick up right where you left off. When the game originally came out in Japan, there were quite a few people singing praises of this game, and now it's plain as day. While Trails of Cold Steel can feel generic at times, all the systems in place make it certainly worth the investment. And that does it for our review of Trails of Cold Steel 2. To see a more detailed and fully written review, be sure to check out our website GamingGamma.com for the full review. There will be a link to the written review down in the description bar below. 
And if you haven't done so already, check out our review of the first Trails of Cold Steel. I'll have a link to that video in an annotation somewhere on the screen in front of you. And if you have any questions or anything, by all means, leave them down in the comment section below. I love interacting with you guys. Also, be sure to subscribe for future Let's Plays and reviews on this channel. And as always, everyone, this is Gamma Lad signing off.